Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad. In this video, I want to talk about what are the features in Microsoft Fabric that you can use straight away as a Power BI developer. There are many features in Fabric, but what are those features and components that if you just use right away and their usage is not really complicated, uh, it would enhance your Power BI implementation. We are going to talk about it and how you can get started with these. Uh, I'll mention some of my other videos and uh, and blogs in this. It, this video would not have any demos, but then you can watch those for extra demos of how this would work. Let's go and check it out. So to use Microsoft Fabric in an environment that you are um, coming from the Power BI development background, uh, you have uh, a lot of options to choose. Let me switch to my screen for a second. So here I'm going to my screen and uh, starting from here. So if you are new to Microsoft Fabric, um, you have to know that Microsoft Fabric is a full suite of analytics uh, as a service. Uh, there's one platform, one licensing uh, a strategy or one licensing um, environment to go and use. Um, and when you use that, you will use that capacity to use any of these, what we call as workloads in Microsoft Fabric, which you can do data integration, data engineering, data warehousing, real-time analytics, data science, uh, business intelligence with Power BI, or uh, some options that are related to any of these, and they all use one lake as one storage uh, layer across all of these. I have a separate video talking about what Fabric is in details. This video is not about what Fabric is, and I'm not going to talk about every one of these components. I'm talking about the fact that you are coming from Power BI background, you are building a Power BI solution, or you already have a Power BI solution in production environment, and you want to know uh, what are the benefits that Fabric can give you. So let's, before we start talking about it, let's talk about what are some of the limitations that you have when you use Power BI. So when you use Power BI, some of the limitations that you have in this environment is um, some of these listed here. We are hearing that Power BI is one tool that you can build the entire analytics with it. You can connect to the data source, get the data, transform it, model it, visualize it, and then share it. But there are scenarios that Power BI comes short. Um, especially when we are talking about advanced uh, data warehousing situations, such as a slowly changing dimension type two or inferred infer dimension member, any of those. For those, you actually need a persistent uh, data warehouse, a database in place that you can implement some, something like that. Uh, what about if you want to refresh your Power BI semantic model after the refresh of your data flow is finished? Like these two are two separate um, to separate processes, but you don't have a tool or a service or component in Power BI that can say refresh semantic model after the refresh of data flow. There is no such thing. You have to use something like Power Automate to combine these two, or you have to schedule these uh, far from each other after each other to make sure that this is done after that, right? Uh, what if you want to use a table that you have used elsewhere and you want to use it here again? Of course, you can get data from that table if it is stored somewhere, but um, there is a, a better way if you can keep the data where it is and just create a link to that. Uh, import data in Power BI gives you best performance, but then you have to refresh your data on a scheduled basis. But if you want to live have the live data, um, of course, you have to use direct query, but then direct query comes at the cost of performance. You would have low performance. Um, other things is that what if you want to do data science, data engineering process with it? What if you want to have an alert system that whatever happens, you want to do an action based on that? Uh, things like these. These are things that at the moment, uh, just using Power BI, this would be a little bit complicated to implement. You can, of course, find workarounds and things like that, but what I'm here to say is that Fabric can enhance these immediately. So first of all, for something like a slowly changing dimension type two or any warehousing situation, 
like late arriving, late arriving fact tables, any of those, you have warehouse and lake house that you can use to implement something like that. We have a data pipeline as part of data factory that can do the data orchestra that can do the orchestration or control flow execution, saying that run the data, uh, refresh the semantic model after the data flow refresh was successful. You can use shortcut to create a link to a table rather than copying it. You can use direct lake mode, which is um, similar to the performance of import data, but the data is fresh, similar to direct query data. Um, of course, data engineers, data scientists can use this platform to go and do any data engineering and data science activities using notebooks or any other tools. And there is something called Data Activator that can give you a platform that you can go and build a, an action-based platform. So all of these can be easily resolved with Fabric. Uh, quick wins that I would mention, and I'm not going to talk about all of those, are these. Um, data Factory. In Data Factory, we have Data Pipeline and Data Flow. This would immediately give you benefits in your Power BI implementation. I'm not talking about going through a learning curve of learning about data science projects, data science algorithms, and things like that. Of course, that is a benefit for you as a Power BI developer if you move to, fa to Fabric, that you can do data science projects, but that is far um, from where you are at the moment, or it would need a learning curve. Whereas something like data pipeline, data, fa data flow, you can use immediately. I'm focusing on this video on things that you can use immediately. Warehouse or lake house as a persistent storage shortcut to have one copy of data and direct lake uh, to use a cutting edge technology that gives you both performance and freshness of data. So let's talk about these uh, in detail. First of all, what is data flow? If you never use data flow, I have created a video like a few years ago talking about what data flow is, is a separation of uh, your ETL layer. So instead of doing transformation inside Power BI desktop, which then your Power BI solution can only use that and not other Power BI solutions, uh, you separate that ETL uh, as a separate layer. You do the data transformation, the data is stored somewhere else, and then any Power BI model, any semantic model can use that. Data flow is not new. Um, in Power BI, we had this concept, Power BI data flows, which we now call it data flow gen one. In Fabric, we have this called as Dataflow Gen 2. Dataflow Gen 1 stores data as CSV files in Azure Data Lake storage, whereas in Fabric, Dataflow Gen 2 gives you storage options for structured outputs such as Lakehouse, Warehouse, Azure SQL Database, or KQL Database. And I have a video explaining what is the Gen 2 um, implementation and how you can also migrate from Gen 1 to Gen 2. So go and check out those, those videos to learn more about it. Um, the other thing is Data Pipeline. Data Pipeline is another component of Data Factory. Using Data Pipeline, you can create a flow of um, activities. Each activity can be different things. Like, for example, an activity can be running a notebook, running a SQL script, running a data flow, running, refreshing a Power BI semantic model. Uh, there are like about 80 different activities. Each activity can have um, output states. As you can see in this screen, um, the data flow activity have states, output states, such as what happens if it is failed, what happens if it is succeeded or completed or skipped. And depending on that output state, you redirect the control of execution to the next activity. So here we can have such, a, such scenarios like this. For example, we can have a data flow that refreshes our dimension tables, another data flow that refreshes the fact tables, and then a Power BI semantic model refresh. In this scenario, we can have three activities and redirect the un unsuccess of each of these, the output state of unsuccess to the next activity. Uh, you have activities such as like send email, running any code in notebook or SQL script, things like that, which can help immediately in your Power BI implementation. This is one of the things that I would highly recommend to go and check it out. And of course, as I mentioned, we have a video uh, about that as well in this channel, in Red Hat YouTube channel, I'll go and check it out. The next big win is warehouse or lake house. It doesn't matter which one of these you use from Power BI point of view, they look pretty much the same. Warehouse or lake house, they both give you a database structure, a place that you can have tables. Uh, with their data columns and rows of data. Then similar to a database, you can use SQL query to analyze the data of these. 
um, or you can use Power BI to connect to that. When Power BI connects to that, it brings the direct lake connection, which I'll talk about it later. But both Lakehouse and Warehouse give you this database storage option. We also recently have database, which is also giving you the same thing. But for analytical purpose, I would suggest using Warehouse or Lakehouse. Database is more for operational database systems. Uh, now, in terms of these th uh, these two, there are differences. Lakehouse is a place that you can also store files as well as a structured data such as table, but it is read only for SQL, um, whereas Warehouse is only for structured data, only for tables. It is read and write. From Power BI point of view, as I said, there are not much differences. Um, and I have a video talking about each of these separately. Also a video talking about what is the difference between Data Warehouse and Lakehouse, or sometimes what are the situations that you use both of these. It is quite common that we use Lakehouse and Warehouse in a medallion architecture where the data comes into a Lakehouse as a uh, bronze layer, then from there it gets transformed into dimensional storage, um, star schema, uh, option, fact table, dimension table into a warehouse as a silver, and then from there into Power BI semantic model as a gold, things like that. But that discussion is outside of this video. Um, the next uh, thing that you would get benefit immediately from Power BI um, used in Fabric is a feature called Shortcut. Shortcut is one of the one lake features because um, the entire Microsoft Fabric uses one storage layer called one lake. If a warehouse or a lake house stores their data in that layer, assuming that you have access to that, you can use it elsewhere in another lake house or warehouse. This feature is called Shortcut. Shortcut at the moment is available in some places, like for example, from a lake house, you can access a table in another lake house or warehouse. And this feature is called shortcut. Shortcut means that you, you are not really copying the data. You are just creating a link to that data, similar to creating shortcut in Windows. It's a link. It's not copy of the data. And that is a really helpful feature because this means that if you want to use that date table, timetable, currency table that you have created in other places, the customer table in other warehouse or lake house, you just create a shortcut to that without copying it. You will have one single version of truth for your data. Very helpful, very simple to set up. And I have a video about that as well. So go and check that out. Uh, the next thing, uh, or the last thing I want to talk about um, in terms of like quick wins of Fabric for Power BI users is Direct Lake. In Power BI, when we connect to a data source, um, there are different types of connections. When I talk about type of connection, I mean how Power BI connect to that data source. When you import data, it means that Power BI creates a copy of that data into Power BI's own storage as file format, and then loads it into memory for analytics. Uh, this is called import, but because it is creating a copy, it has to refresh the data. So normally we schedule the refresh of an import model. The performance is really good, but then you have to schedule the refresh to get up to date data. For some businesses, for some requirements, that scheduled refresh process is, um, is not going to uh, be good enough. They want live data anytime and they are looking at it. So we have a direct query situation. Direct query is not copying the data, it's just bringing the metadata. Every time you see a visualization, it creates a SQL code, send it to the data source, the result comes back. This process is slow because the data has to be passed through the network to your Power BI um, visualization, and this would take time. So direct query is live data, but it is slow. Direct Lake, which is a new cutting edge technology provided in Microsoft Fabric, is the only option that uh, is is the only option that has combination of these two in a really good and reasonable way. What it does is that Direct Lake means that when Power BI connects to a lake house or warehouse or even the database that is new, uh, when the data is stored in Delta Lake format underneath as a Parquet file, uh, Power BI considered that file to be its own proprietary file. It does not generate a new file and it will use that uh, similar to the way that it used import. But because that file is including the live data, it is similar to direct query. So direct lake, in fact, is import data, but with freshness of direct query or direct query, but with performance of import data. Not exactly like import data, but close to import data. Uh, I have a video exactly about talking about 
what direct link is, the details of it, how does it work. There is no refresh process, but there is a process called reframe, which is not taking, definitely not taking as long as a refresh. It's just like a few seconds, which means pointing to a new um, Delta Lake table. In fact, the Delta Lake situation in this case is um, also something you need to learn. And I have a separate video talking about what the Delta Lake itself is. So in, in general, uh, this, Features that I've talked about here are the features that you can use as a Power BI developer right away now uh, to enhance your Power BI implementation. You can use Dataflow to separate your ETL. You can use Data Pipeline to orchestrate that process. You can use Direct Lake to have a better performance while having the up-to-date data. And you can use Shortcut um, to, uh, to have one single copy of your data but reuse it anywhere and of course warehouse and lake house warehouse and lake house are if i want to only mention one thing among these that you have to use i would suggest that uh, i do power bi training and microsoft fabric training especially i do some some microsoft fabric training these days for power bi developers so if you want to learn more about it go and check out our uh, training page in radicat website if you like this video go ahead and subscribe into our youtube channel we have weekly videos on microsoft fabric and power bi until the next video, bye.